Big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Pegboard is awesome for storing tools, but let's say you don't have enough wall space to put up a full sheet of eight foot pegboard. There is a different way. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this box that has three pullout trays, if you will, that has pegboard squares. This configuration not only takes almost just as much pegboard as I have on my workbench, but confines it to the small footprint, but it also allows you the ability to use both sides of the pegboard. Let me show you how I made it. What I did is I grabbed a sheet of quarter inch pegboard and I cut it into the rectangles. You can dictate the size depending on how big of a holder that you want. This is the side that I went with and I do have a set of plans over my website if you want my dimensions. Now the idea is to be able to pull this pegboard out like this, but even though I went with quarter inch pegboard, it's still gonna be too flimsy once I load it down with tools to just utilize by itself. So instead, I'm gonna build a frame for it and I'm gonna do that by cutting some half inch plywood with a dado in the middle so that this pegboard can nest inside of it. And then this entire thing will be what slides in and out of the cabinet itself. So in order to make these components, First, grab a sheet of pegboard and then cut it down using a track saw. Then to make the frame, I simply went with scraps that I had around the shop. This is half inch plywood that I first cut into strips at the table saw. And I determined this dimension based off of once this is, if you call it a picture frame, and then I have a tool hanging. This will give it the depth so that the tool isn't protruding out, hitting into the next layer of pegboard. Once I have the width cut, in order to cut in this groove, I simply flip the piece over, lower the blade down, and then make a few passes with the blade only at a quarter inch depth. Then once you have the slots cut, I use the rectangles themselves to hold my plywood up and determine the length. Okay, now for assembling, the way that it's gonna look is long side goes to long side, and then the short side goes to the short side. Like just like that. And I'm gonna be applying a liberal amount of wood glue to not only the uh, frame connection points, but also inside the dado, because this pegboard doesn't actually need to slide. And then I will secure it in place using some brad nails. I find this easiest instead of working vertical like this, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it on its side like so. And the frame itself will create a small standoff for you. Before that glue sets up, you wanna make sure that when it's setting up, it, this is already in square. So this is 28 and a 16th. This is 28 and a 16th. Okay, so this one's perfectly square and just fine. I guess for the sake of showing you, if it's not in square, what I would do is I would set a clamp on. You wanna set it on whatever the long side is, whatever the long diagonal is, and you just wanna squeeze it until it is in square. And that way, as that glue is setting up, it'll hold it in place. The great thing about this project is that you can make it as big or small as your space can allow or your needs allow. I'm personally gonna make four of these total. So next I just repeated the steps to make four identical boxes or trays. Let me show you the final assembly and then I'll show you break it down and make it. So pretty much now I'm gonna be setting these trays into place with spacers in between them so that they can slide while giving me about four inches of depth in between each one of the trays and then about two inches. So each tray will have two inches of depth overall. Then these trays can slide in and out, letting you utilize the pegboard. So now let's make this. I love using wood on wood sliders instead of any other sort of expensive hardware when it makes sense. But in order to do that, I always take a piece of melamine edge banding. This stuff is peel and stick. It comes in a long roll and I tape the side that's gonna be sliding against wood. And this creates a really nice slick surface that's gonna give you very little friction. I wanna say a big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. You guys know that I've used Simply Safe for my personal and commercial shop security for a while now. They provide serious home security with all the protection but with none of the hassle, headaches or expense of the old school brands. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, and door, plus lots of great extras like smart locks, video doorbells, water sensors, and more. Their new wireless outdoor security camera has a built-in spotlight with color night vision and two-way audio, allowing you to speak directly to somebody on your property, which I really like. 
Simply Safe is trusted by over 3 million Americans, and it's no wonder as I found all of the devices to be very reliable, set up as a breeze, and they're easy to use. I've got the security system installed, window sensors, and HD cameras inside and out. The 24 7 monitoring service calls the authorities immediately in an emergency, making me feel extra safe. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and your first month is free when you sign up for interactive monitoring. You can visit simplysafe.com slash April to learn more. So on these outside pieces, only one side is edge banded, but then these inside dividers, both sides are gonna be. Then even on these trays, this tray is gonna be sliding back and forth like this. These, both of the runners are gonna have a slick surface already. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of melamine along this surface here in order to make this glide just a tad bit easier. I'm actually gonna take my excess amount from my last one. And this doesn't need to be perfect, but I just want it somewhere about center. Just to create a nice frictionless surface. Now to assemble, I'm gonna be using glue and brad nails once again. I'm gonna start with the short rail, making sure the edge banding is facing where the tray is gonna be placed. And I'm gonna line it up to flush to one side because then back here, I'll show you what goes back there in a second. Now next we'll go the tray, but what I'm gonna do is I cut up some cardboard here and I'm gonna put in a few just to act as a spacer in between the railing and the tray. Okay, now let me turn it this way. We're gonna do the larger spacer. This has the edge banding on both sides. And I'm again gonna put in a few shims on this side. Now, taking out those cardboard slides, cardboard shims, you can see how great that slides. We're just gonna move them over and repeat. You can see I'm kind of going light on the glue. Um, I don't want a lot of glue squeeze out because I don't want it accidentally gluing my, my tray to the table. And what I would recommend is, of course, I cut my bottom because I knew the size that I wanted, but I would start from one side, build it out, making sure to leave your bottom large, and then that way you can just cut off the excess. Take out the shims and the should slide. Perfect. Okay, go into the back space. I'm gonna apply some wood glue back here. And I just have some one by boards that I'm gonna nail into place. Actually, I'm gonna flip this over. And this is gonna allow me to make a box out of this entire unit. Okay, now I'm gonna put on the sides. I'm gonna turn the whole unit up on end. Line this side up flush. And then Brad and I let it into place. I'm gonna use the second side in order to prop it up as I nail it. When attaching the second side, I'm gonna use a tray in place in order to create a holding shelf. Now we have a box with sliding components. To attach the last side, I'm gonna throw it on its back, work with gravity. Okay, once the second side's attached, now I have a box. And that's the way it's supposed to look. Perfect. Okay. So now you can see the way that it functions. Pull it out, grab the thing that you need. Now to pretty these up some, I'm gonna go ahead and add some drawer faces. You could screw it from the inside if you ever wanna make these removable, but I'm not. I'm just gonna simply add some wood glue. Stick this in place and then you use two brads in order to permanently stick it. Yep, that's how that works. So a quick and simple project that will allow you to utilize the function of pegboard without having to take up a whole bunch of wall space. However, I imagine it very well will be the case that I'll use all of this plus this. I could also see this going great in some sort of like craft room if you wanna utilize it inside the house. So like I said, I have a set of plans over on my website. Hope that you were able to get some good information or inspiration out of this. And I'll see you on whatever I'm working on next.
If you are looking for some great sawhorse plans, then I have a link for you right here for this one, as well as two other variations. This one's cheap, it's sturdy, it's very quick to put together, and the thing that I like the best is that it's foldable. And it's collapsible.